yes, today I'm going to show you some of my favorite Beatles. But before I do that, I have a question for you. What do these three things have in common? Jewels, Beatles, and throwing cats? This and more in today's episode of Drawer of the Week. Warning, this episode may upset animal lovers. Hey everyone, and thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you my favorite family of beetles, the jewel beetles, also known as the Buprestidae. This family is along the largest family of beetles, with an estimated 17,000 or more species. But what makes these beetles really special to me are their often breathtaking metallic colors. These beetles are among some of the most colorful you can find on the planet Earth. And that's why they deserve their own special episode in my web series. And in this episode, I'm going to show you a variety of nice species while educating you about their biology. While not all species of Buprestidae are colorful, I will focus on the ones that are. But it should be noted that not all species have pretty metallic colors, as some Buprestidae species can just be plain brown or black. My name is Bart Coppens an independent entomologist that mostly works with butterflies and moths. However, did you know that I have knowledge of many more insect families than that? In fact, if I really want to, I could educate you about any insect family I want to in the world. It's just that I decide to focus myself on butterflies and moths most of the time, as they are my main passion. But as in this episode, I'm going to share with you some of my hidden knowledge of other types of insects. In this episode, I'm going to generalize this family a little bit and uh, tell you about what makes them special. I'm going to talk about these beetles on a family level, so not on a species level. And I'm not going to identify uh, each of all the species that you will see in this video. Although I will tell you some facts about species that stand out to me personally. This species that you are currently looking at is called Chrysochroa fulminans. Chrysochroa beetles are considered to be wood boring beetles for their larvae bore into trees. These beetles can be found from Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines to Papua New Guinea and generally uh, are contained in what is called the Indo-Australian ecozone. This beetle right here can reach a length of about 30 to 40 millimeters in size. The specimens in this video are of the green variety. In reality, there are also blue, violet and reddish varieties of this species, which are actually in many cases considered to be subspecies with different geographical distributions. This species is often sought after for its beautiful metallic iridescent colors that truly make it appear to be a gemstone. This species is one of the more commonly encountered species of Buprestidae within the Peninsular Tropical Asian region. It seems that its beauty doesn't only attract entomologists, however. It may be interesting to note that these beetles are very sought after for cultural reasons. One of the examples that uh, draws a lot of attention is the work of artist Mr. Jan Fabre. This artist from Belgium is known for using the shield or elytra of these beetles to make art with. In fact, a well-known artist hired a team of collectors to collect several millions of beetles from him for a while to use in his art. From mosaics and paintings to sculptures to dresses, chandeliers, and more. Millions of beetles were killed and collected to make his art. 
Now as an entomologist, I generally support collecting operations, but this is all a little bit extreme in my opinion. But this artist, Mr. Fawe, isn't known to shun controversial works. One time, Mr. Faber designed a maze of razor blades with live tarantulas in it. And this allowed the public to watch how the tarantulas um, gradu gradually died of their injuries as the heavy spiders cut themselves trying to escape, climbing over the razor blades in the process and eventually bleeding to death. Because of their heavy body weight, tarantulas cannot climb over sh sharp objects without risking cutting themselves and their fragile bodies. Oh, and did you know one time, this artist decided to throw cats through a city hall in order to make um, an art film? That sure was something. And his other artwork includes stringing up dead dogs and cats. Okay, don't get me wrong. I'm a museum worker. I am surrounded by dead animals all the time. And in fact, I support collecting and killing animals when it benefits our knowledge of them. But this is for science, not for projects like this. And I think this is really senseless slaughter. So Jan, if you're watching this, shame on you. This guy clearly has a few more screws loose than I have. And that says a lot. Let's continue the video. The science of the color of these beetles, it is truly unlike any other animal. Perhaps you've heard it before. But every insect has a hardened exoskeleton, made of chitin. When it comes to the coloration of most insects, it contains pigments that determine their colors. However, these beetles they have no such thing. Apparently, these beetles have multi-layered exoskeletons, in which each layer has a different refractive index. They act as a multi-layer interference reflector, and the color that is observed depends on both the angle and the layer the incident light is being reflected from. But with this system, they are able to produce more or less all colors. Now, my understanding of physics is very basic, so I had to take some time to study all of this and understand this concept. But if you think about it, it's an amazing way to produce color. Um, because, well, these beetles can produce most colors in the visible light spectrum by just very slightly altering the morphology of these layers. And finally, I understand why Bipressidae are so prone to evolving new color forms and subspecies that, uh, that easily in different locations. It only takes a slight alteration of the multi-layered cuticle to change the wavelength of the major amount of light being reflected back to the observer. As someone who has studied butterflies and moths all his life, this completely blew me away. Now butterflies do something similar sometimes, by reflecting light with their rigid scales that have lamellae. And usually these lamellae uh, correspond to the size of the wavelength they are trying to reflect. But these scales tend to reflect incident light directly back to the observer by capturing the intended wavelength in nanostructures that corresponds to its wavelength while filtering out all the unwanted wavelengths. But this principle, that the one that beetles have, is much different since the incident light passes through a multi-layered photonic structure that transforms it instead of just directly reflecting it back. Repressive can prove to be very destructive invasive species if they are introduced to new environments because of their habit to bore into trees. In ecosystems where they are native, the species more or less have reached an equilibrium with their environment. But in a new environment with unlimited host plants and very little predators or diseases, these beetles can destroy whole forests. One prime example is the emerald ash borer, scientific name Achilles planipennis, a green-colored bipressed beetle uh, native to northeastern Asia that feeds on ash species. It was introduced to America by accident and now is destroying all the ash trees on a massive scale, potentially irreparably damaging forest ecosystems. Why are these beetles so colorful anyways? Well, the function of color is a universal one. 
from camouflage to warning predators about how toxic you are to finding a mate or a partner. No doubt their iridescence also helps them find a partner more easily. Adult jewel beetles mainly feed on plant foliage or nectar, although some species feed on pollen and can be observed visiting flowers. Adults only live for a very short time and mainly to reproduce in most cases. Thank you for watching my video. I do have one more thing to show you before I leave. You see sadly my favorite kind of jewel beetle was missing from the museum collection where I was working at. So I ob ob obtained them especially for you and because I really wanted to show them to you in this video. Now last but not least I wanted to show you my favorite pieces of them but we didn't have it in the museum collection. That kind of sucks. So what it is, I brought some specimens online. Um, you guys are so kind to, to donate to my channel once in a while. So this are the, these are the moments that these donations help me a lot. I think this is the one and only time I'm going to make a video about the Bupresti day. Because my channel is mainly about butterflies and moths. This is basically a special off topic video. And it's the only time I'm going to discuss them and for that reason I think it's okay to, uh, to go the extra mile when I do discuss them, you know, because I want my favorite pieces of them in here. So let's show you, it has to be natural daylight, for the colors are really complex and have to be appreciated here in the f in the, under the sun. So let's uh, show them. Wow. Just look at this guys is that not incredibly amazing now i'm donating some of these to the museum collection because sometimes i add uh, insects that we are missing in the collection to the collection database and uh, these are just incredible insects really i would really love to see a live one though That they are really pretty, but imagine an insect like this moving and flying. It's even more incredible. So amazing. Wow. What a piece of work they are. Beautiful. Here is Chrysocroa fulgens native to Thailand, Vietnam and other parts of Asia. Isn't this animal simply breathtaking? Without all of you this species would not be in this video. But it is one of my favorites and I really wanted to show this one off to you. So I am very happy that in the end I was able to include it. Last but not least all the specimens here will be donated to a museum collection or many of them were already part, to a scientific, uh, part of a scientific collection. And none of them were acquired illegally. Because of all your support, I'm able to go the extra mile for my videos. Please remember to support me on Patreon. Since my channel is entirely crowdfunded, my YouTube channel is entirely demonetized and because of that I don't make money from my videos like other YouTubers do. Instead I am for 100% reliant on donations and crowdfunding. And it would make a big difference uh, to me if some of you were able to help me out and subscribe to my Patreon or find other ways to help me in the description below this video. It is thanks to all of your support that I was able to add a different, uh, an extra species to this video as a bonus that I really, really wanted to have included. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed a video that was not about butterflies and moths. I tried to make my YouTube channel a little bit more diverse. Do you have any ideas of what I'm going to show you in the future? Then write in the comments what types of insects you would like to see on my channel or would hear... Uh, like to hear me explain to you things about. Oops, that was a little bit uh, bad English, but uh, hey, I'm not a native speaker, so I make grammatically incorrect sentences sometimes. 
Anyways, let me know in the comments what insects you want to see in the future on my channel. Maybe they are not butterflies and moths. Hey, a little bit of variety is good for views. Bye bye. Hello everyone and thank you for watching this week's episode of Drawer of the Week. My name is Bart Coppens and I work with butterflies and moths. Both dead ones and live ones. Because I breed them in captivity. I study them, I film them, I photograph them, I research them. And I volunteer in a museum collection where I'm a conservator of the butterflies and moths. Now Drawer of the Week is my weekly series where I show you one drawer with interesting specimens from a museum and give you some interesting facts about them. If you like it, like my video, subscribe to my channel and consider joining my crowdfunding platform Patreon. Because only with your help, my mission to educate the whole world about insects can be fulfilled. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next episode of this weekly series. Hello everyone and thank you for watching Drawer of the Week, my weekly video series. I would like to take a moment to thank these guys. I would like to take a moment to say thanks to the Natural History Museum of Rotterdam or in Dutch Het Natuurhistorisch Museum van Rotterdam. All the insect videos I film, I film in the scientific collection of the Rotterdam Natural History Museum where I work as a honorary junior conservator. Thanks for watching and till next time.